Hello and welcome back to the Tech Blackboard. Today is our part 6 on our TP900 real exam question series. You don't want to miss the earlier 5 parts. The link for the entire playlist is now available in the i button on the top right corner and in the description box below. So let's start our part 6 with question number 61. <music> In question number 61, you are given a table. The table name is sales and then you are given some columns. The first is sales date, sales amount and product ID. So you are given with some dates, you are given with some amount and the product ID of each product. Now it says that you need to query the table to return average sales amount per day. The output must produce the following results. So what you essentially are doing is that you need to group the dates okay, and bring out the average sales on each day. So let me explain this further to you. So on the 6th April, you can see here, we have two days, two entries for 6th April. The first one has the amount $40 and the second one has amount $200. Now, if you calculate average on uh, using a simple mathematical formula, you know that average is sum of the observations divided by number of observation. So what you need to essentially do is you need to add up both the amounts. So $200 plus $40 is $240. And number of observation is like we have two records for 6th April. So $240 divided by 2 is $120. So this is how the result is calculated. Okay, so now in the section below, the question is that how should you complete the query? To answer, drag the appropriate value to the correct target. Each value may, may be used once, more than once or not at all. Okay, so let's look at the uh, values that are given. So you see here, this is a answer area and it is a uh, and this is a, you can say half baked query. So yeah, they have given some part of it and you have to fill in this to these two boxes, right? So these are your options. You can either use create, order by, group by or select. Okay, so let's see what they have given us. So we have something that will come here, then select sales date, average sales amount from sales, then something and sales date. So if you look at the construct of the query, you would know that in first step we normally select. So we select sales date and because we have to calculate the average, we have this average. Average is a function that we use to uh, calculate the average of something. And this is the column sales amount. And then from sales, of course, this is the sales table. And then what we need to do is because as I told you, we are actually grouping the dates, right? So that's why here you will fill group by. Let's see the answer. Okay, so as I mentioned that you have to put the select keyword first and then after that you have to group by based on sales date. I hope you understood the concept. So now, so let's, now start let's start with our question number 62. The question number 62 says, when provisioning an Azure Cosmos DB, which feature provides redundancy within Azure region? So the question is asking you to provide the option which actually gives a redundancy under, under Azure region. So please understand the hierarchy very clearly that the redundancy being asked is under Azure region. I'm repeating this again and again so that you are paying attention on this one. Before answering this question, I will take you through Azure site. So if you will see the Azure site here, you can see there's a lot of information given on region and availability zones. Okay. Here you can read that each region has a data center that's distributed within a response time defined parameter. Okay, and then coming to a little down here, we also have availability zones. So availability zones are physically separate location 
in each Azure region. So I hope the hierarchy is coming into your mind. So we have region on top and inside region we have availability zones. Okay, now let's go back to our question slide. So in the question slide, as I told you, it's Azure region on the top and inside the region we have availability zones. So I hope the concept of the region and the zones are clear to you. Moving on with question number 63. This one asks that you need to gather real-time telemetry data from a mobile application. Which type of workload describes this scenario? So again, find out the keywords. The keyword here is real-time. Okay, Whenever we are talking about real-time, it is always related to streaming data, right? So uh, the other one, which is closely related to the concept is batch data. Batch data is not real time. Batch data is we collect the data and we process the data whenever some condition is met, right? So this is a difference between batch and streaming data. Moving on with our question number 64, we have what is an Azure benefit of Azure Cosmos DB Table API as compared to Azure Table Storage? So the right answer for this one is that Azure Cosmos DB Table API actually supports multi-master model. So you can say that um, if you work with this Azure Table Storage and Azure Cosmos DB, you can say that Azure Cosmos DB is an enhanced version of Azure Table Storage itself. So there is a lot of limitation on Azure Table Storage. Uh, however, those limitations are taken uh, away in the Azure Cosmos DB. Uh, and of course, Azure Cosmos DB is costlier service than using Azure Table Storage, okay? Then let's see the question number 65. In this question, it says you need to store data by using Azure storage, Azure table storage. What should you create first? So uh, it's not related to only the table storage. We can use other storages as well. The question might ask you that you want to store data in Azure blob storage or table storage. So they can change the type of storage. But you always remember that the first thing that you ever create to use any sort of storage is Azure Storage Account. So Azure Storage Account is the placeholder which stores, which has, which actually provides you different type of storage facilities in the Azure uh, Cloud. Okay. Now let's look at the question number 66. Question number 66 is related to data warehouse. Okay, let's look at the question. It says that what is the primary purpose of data warehouse? Let's look at the option from the below. The option D is to provide storage for transactional line of business applications. Or option C, to provide read-only storage of relational and non-relational historical data. Or is it option B, to provide transformation services between source and target data stores or to provide answers to complex queries that rely on data from multiple sources. So if you look at the concept of data warehouse, you will understand that this might be properties of data warehouse. Uh, it, it does provide transformation or read only storage. However, B, C or D, none of these are the primary purpose of data warehouse. The primary purpose of a data warehouse is to collect data, store data from different sources and provide you capabilities to query data, to analyze data and take better business decision. That's the primary purpose of data warehouse. With this knowledge, I can tell you the correct answer for this one is option A, which is to provide answers to complex queries that rely on data from multiple sources. Let's look at our question number 66. This one says that you manage an application that stores data in a shared folder on a Windows server. You need to move the shared folder 
to a Azure storage. Which type of Azure storage should you use? Is it queue, blob, file, or table? The important keywords here that you should note is shared folder. Okay, so whenever you use shared folders, you're always left with one option in Azure storage, and that one is file storage, right? Queue storage, queue is nothing but queue we normally use in messaging. Blob is more suitable for pictures or videos or audio files. Table is like key value pair if we talk about Azure table storage. However, blob is file is something that provides you uh, capabilities of a, creating a folder, so creating files in it and you know mapping it to the Windows Drive uh, using SMB. So the correct answer for this one is file. Coming to our question number 68, which says that you need to recommend a data store service that meets following requirements. Requirements are native SQL API access, configurable indexes. What should you recommend? Should you recommend Azure Files, Blob Storage, Azure Table Storage, or Azure Cosmos DB? Now, if you see the options given here, Azure File does not has like capabilities of these uh, API access, neither blob or table. It's only Cosmos DB that give you native support for Azure API access and configurable indexes. So the correct answer is Azure Cosmos DB. Let's move to our question number 69. Our question number 69 is, you have an application that runs on Windows and requires access to a map drive. Which Azure service should you use? Is it Azure Files, Azure Blob Storage, Azure Cosmos DB, or Azure Table Storage? If you have been paying attention, then you might notice that question number 69 is very close to question number 67, right? In this question, it asks that you have an application which requires access to a map drive. While describing 67, I told you that it's the file that provides you mapping capabilities. Thus, we can rule out the option Azure Blob Storage, Cosmos, or Table Storage. So the correct answer for this one is Azure Files. Let's move on to our question number 70. Now let's look at the closing question for our part six. Question number 70. This asks that your company needs to design a database that shows how changes in network traffic in one area of a network affect network traffic in other area of the network. So which type of data store should you use? Should you use graph, key value, or document, or columnar data? So looking at the question, the key points to note here are that you are on a same network However, you want to know that changes in one area, how does they affect changes in another area? So you are trying to essentially establish relationship or dependencies of different areas. So whenever these kind of questions are coming or like relationship between employees, these kind of questions, then you should always select the option graph database because these databases are well suited to find out relationships, dependency on various entities. Okay, so I hope this was clear to you. I hope that you thoroughly enjoyed the part six. In this part, we discussed a lot of great concepts on Azure data and related services. We started to discuss with select and group clause on of Azure SQL query. We also discussed upon Azure regions and how Azure availability zones provide redundancy or availability. Then we discussed upon Azure batch and Azure real-time processing or streaming processing. We also discussed upon Azure files, when to use them and what capabilities do they provide. And then we discussed upon Azure graph 
and how to use the Azure Graph Services, use cases for it, and lot more. If this video has added any value in your learning, a like and subscribe is highly appreciated. Share this video in your family and friends to spread and expand their learning. Your comments and feedback give me a chance to interact with you and I look forward for them. We will meet again in our next video. Till then, stay fit, keep learning and thanks for watching.